Hi, I'm Carol Baskin, and I'm the founder and CEO of Big Cat Rescue. We're the world's largest accredited sanctuary that is devoted entirely to caring for big cats. Our mission is to provide the best care possible for the 100 plus exotic cats in our care, and also to end the trade. It costs more than a million dollars a year to fund the sanctuary, and we can only rescue five or six big cats as our older cats die from old age. We're still having to turn away more than 50 big cats a year, and sometimes as many as 100. The problem is that the accredited sanctuaries are full and overflowing, so all of these tigers have nowhere to go. The answer isn't to build more sanctuaries. We can't rescue our way out of this. The only thing that really works is to ban the private possession of these magnificent animals. Big Cat Rescue tracks the number of killings, maulings, escapes, and the number of abandoned big cats. And the reason that we do that is because there's no government agency that does so. The charts show that there are a continuous escalation of killings, maulings, and escapes up through the early 2000s. There was also an increase in the number of big cats who were being abandoned. In fact, every other year that number was doubling, and by 2003 we had to turn away 312 big cats, and those were just the ones that we knew about. In the late 1990s, we started working on better laws to restrict the private ownership of these kinds of animals, but it took until 2003 for the Captive Wild Animal Safety Act to be passed. What that law did was it made it illegal to sell big cats across state lines as pets. But what we saw was, instead of having to turn away five or six hundred cats the next year, based on the way the scales were currently going, that number dropped for the first time ever, and it dropped to 165. As eight more states passed bans and partial bans, those numbers that we had to turn away each year continued to drop, and last year we only had to turn away 50 big cats. Now the biggest part of the problem are people who pay to play with baby tigers or to pose with baby tigers. The exploiters pose as roadside zoos or as pseudo-sanctuaries, dragging baby tigers and baby lions out to malls and fairs and using them in circus acts because people will pay to touch a baby tiger. The problem is that they can only use those tigers for a very short period of time, and then they are warehoused in miserable conditions. That's why we currently have far more tigers living in backyards and basements than we do left in the wild. Many rescue facilities start out with good intentions, but what they discover is it's a very expensive proposition to provide care for a big tiger. It costs Big Cat Rescue more than $7,500 per tiger per year in order to provide proper care. Far too many facilities count on the money that they can generate by breeding the tigers in their care so that people will pay to have their picture made with a baby tiger or will pay to play with a baby tiger. And the problem is that they continue to warehouse these tigers in increasingly cramped enclosures until they just can't afford to do it anymore. Right now in Texas, there are more than 75 tigers that have been abandoned in a facility that has gone under. The same is true in Florida, where there are 75 tigers in two and a half acres in a residential neighborhood. Also in Oklahoma, more than 60 tigers have their owner going to jail in the coming months. There's no place for these cats to go. Right now in Florida, Texas, Oklahoma, Indiana, and Colorado, there are thousands of tigers in substandard facilities that are continuing to be bred constantly for this trade in the baby tigers. When these places implode, there will be no place for these tigers to go. The reason that the big cat crisis must be dealt with now is not only because of the abuse and suffering of so many tigers in the U.S., but also because it provides a legal cover for an illegal trade. The black market trade in these cats for their bones, their skins, their teeth, their hides, their meat, all of these things are being used and often passed off as animals that are not protected, such as lions. The problem is that officials cannot tell a captive tiger from a wild tiger.
legal to kill cougars and lions and deal in their meat and their hides here in the U.S. And yet, once a tiger has been skinned, no one can tell his meat from lion meat. Circus acts are constantly moving tigers to and from the U.S. The problem started in the 1980s with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Because there were so many exploiters who were wanting to breed baby tigers for photo opportunities and for other exploitive uses, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service decided that if the tiger was not purebred, thus could not be tracked back to the wild, or was inbred, as is done for the white tigers, that there would be no permitting process required for those tigers. As a result, any tiger in backyard cages can be bred and traded almost with no regulations whatsoever. Despite tens of thousands of letters to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service asking them to rescind their generic tiger loophole, they have been unwilling to respond. We need an international database that tracks these animals from the time that they're born, that includes microchipping, that includes a database that the public can actually monitor. We need a permitting process that limits the breeding of tigers to the species survival plans that will actually protect tigers in the wild. I've been providing care for exotic cats for more than 30 years. And if there's one thing I know for sure, it's that big cats don't belong in cages. Yeah.